Hi guys, this is Vineet Pandey and in today's video, we are going to talk about post-modern literature. Yes, when students start preparing exam, they actually get confused with modern age and when the modern age becomes different in post-modern, they totally get confused. The problem is that students who are studying modern age find postmoderns totally different and this is the reason that in this video I am going to tell you what is postmodern age, what are the origins of postmodern age and what are the characteristics. Along with these things to help my net GRF students to qualify in their attempts I am also going to tell you top 10 authors from postmodern age. So let's start. My dear friends, do you know that the idea of modernization comes approx 1890s? Yes, the last 10 year of 90s when Queen Victoria was almost aged and last of her last years were there. This was the time of science fiction and a kind of abundant development. These last 10 years are called nervous 90s. This was the time when in 1901 Queen Victoria died, the world was having a kind of issue related to wars. 1905, a war between Japan and Russia where Japan defeated Russia. 1905, a war between Italy and Ethiopia where Ethiopia defeated Italy and some other conditions. This was the reason that colonization was at its heights. The raw materials being used from the exploitations of colonized countries was making England a superpower while other countries in Europe were ready to go for a war. This was the time that Europe was already ravaged by war and when they entered in modern age, in the words of Virginia Woolf 1910, human character change. When they entered in modern age, they were looking for reason, for logic, for textfulness. So was the literature. In literature also, they were going for society-based literature dealing with the exact issues of society, representation of common men's pain, sufferings, emotions. When D.H. Lawrence came with his ideas of study of sexuality in family, he was the one who surprised everyone with the ideas of Oedipus complex. One of the finest examples by D.H. Lawrence is Sons and Lovers. So this was the base of postmoderns. The logic, the idea, the story, narrations and yes, the questioning of absurdism was all the base of modernism. In 1950s, primarily after the World War II, a chaos, a chaotic situation that over prevailed, it became the reason of postmodernism. Now they started questioning the authenticity itself. The authenticity got doubted, suspense, playfulness, dark humor, fragmentation, all of these things became the part of it. The unreliable narrators, the unreliability of the narrations were also the part of this kind of literature. Postmodern literature was actually based on chaotic conditions. One of the most important thing that is the base of postmodernism is Holocaust, World War II and the atom bomb use. So what we say is postmodern age, a literature, a mindset that was based on abstract, focused on absurdness and tried to find out the pathos, black humor, irony in a confused state. This is called postmodern age. Friends, as I told you that origins of postmodern age were related to many things, primarily World War I and World War II. See, World War I started from 1914 to 1918 was enough to give a shock to the world. And then the world got a blow on the face in 1930s. 1930s Great Depression caused the lives. Millions of people died because they were hungry. They were all became bankrupt. The failures of the bank, failure of the stock exchange markets and the failures of economy resulted in more ravages than the world war itself. And when they were already recovering from these things, they were trying to come out of this shock. Another punch on the face was World War II. My friends, you all know that World War II, Hitler made sure that Germany will take revenge of his humiliations. Hitler was experimenting with biochemical weapons while Japan attacked America. On America's Pearl Harbor's attack resulted in the reply by America. You know, when Japan attacked America, the Japanese general said that we have awoken the sleeping giant. Humne sote hue rakshas ko jaga diya hai. And when America replied with a nuclear bomb, with the atom bomb in Nagasaki and Hiroshima, 
the world reads to a different stage. Yes, we entered in the world of atom bombs, where one country proved its superiority and made everyone think about their identities, their survivals, their future. The survival itself got questioned. One of the brilliant writers of modern age, W. H. Auden, wrote September 1, 1939. In this poetry, he deals with confusion, chaos, fear, speculations about World War II. This is the evening of World War II and he says, I am uncertain, afraid, clever hopes of future expired today. This faith, which was actually wasted, the fear, the fear of going in the dark, the confusion, the chaos, it became the reason of postmodern approaches. Hitler's torture to 6 million Jews and their murders in an organized way in the concentration camp, which we also know as Holocaust. Most of you should read Holocaust literature if you are preparing for JRF seriously. Because Holocaust literature is equally important and is part of trauma studies, trauma literature. Holocaust, atom bomb, then late capitalism, all of these things resulted in a kind of mindset which was beautifully represented by the beat generations. Do you know in 1950s and 60s in America, America was full of hippies full of people who lost their visions, they had no idea about their future. All they were doing was going for drugs, party and enjoyment. They found different forms of sexuality, they explored different different options of sexuality and were heavily dependent on drugs. Their idea was that there is no future. Our future is in the hands of someone who has a nuclear bomb. There is no end of life, there is no hope. And all we should do is just live the moment. So technically, the black humor, the pathos, irony, confusion, fragmentation, all of these things became the part of postmodern age. So whenever somebody questions you in the exams that what are the biggest origins of postmodern mindset, postmodern age, remember this thing, World War II, Remember this thing, beat generation mindset or the hippie culture. Remember this thing, that holocaust and along with all these things, the independent colonies. Because this was a time that most of the colonies got freed. So this was the idea of origin. Now we move towards the third part of the lecture. My dear friends, as you are preparing for NET GRF exam, you must know what is postmodern age. You must know what are the origins of postmodern age and then what are the characteristics. The third part is here in front of you. It's very important. The first characteristic is embrace of randomness. Postmodern works reject the idea of absolute meaning and instead it embraces the randomness and disorder. Postmodern novels often employ unreliable narrators to further muddy the waters with extreme subjectivity and prevent readers from finding meaning during the story. As you see, we have studied literature in order. We know that a good person is a hero at the end. But no, this is not the life goes on. Postmodern literature believes in disorder of society, which is known as paranoia, order and disorder things. Life is not so simple that everything is in order. Postmodern literature believes that life can be chaotic, surprising, unreliable. Most of these postmodern literary books have used unreliable narrators, also known as meta-narrative. Do you know one of the finest example of unreliable narrator is Murder of Roser Ackroyd, where the man who is narrating the story he himself is the murderer. Now let's go for point number two, playfulness. While modernist writers mourn the loss of order, postmodern writers revel in it, often using tools like black humor, wordplay, irony and other techniques of playfulness to dizzy the readers and muddle the story. Friends, as I told you that they do not believe in the order, postmodern writers actually focus on pathos, black humor, confused state of mind. They actually celebrate absurdity. All the absurd writers, absurd literature writers waiting for Godot by Samuel Beckett or Endgame, Crafts Last Tape or Chairs by Ionesco, these kind of works are studied in postmodern literature. These works actually celebrate the confusion, chaotic condition and absurdity. Third is fragmentation. Postmodern literature took modernism's fragmentation and expanded on it, moving literary works from toward collage style forms temporal distortions and significant jumps in character and place. Fragmentation is a non-linear way of narration. 
you can start your story from the last scene you can start your story with the flashback and moreover there is no proper order of conversation between the characters the jumps the distortions are the part of it and moreover the books are written in collage style means to write one work they take references from many books for example this particular style was used by T.S. Eliot also in Wasteland which is the one of the finest example of postmodern theory pasties where you take references from multiple sources to write down one work james joyce fenigan's week also carries the postmodern narration fourth is metafiction postmodern literature emphasizes meaninglessness and play postmodern writers begin to experiment with more meta elements in their novels and short stories drawing attention to their works artifice and reminding readers that the author isn't an authority figure guys postmodern books are written in metafiction narrative style where the narrator himself is not reliable and metafiction is an attempt to let you know that it is a fiction as the grecians would use breaking of fourth wall that was a metafiction narrative style the characters talking to the audience the characters accepting the presence of the audience in the story is metafiction style one of the finest example of metafiction style is lucy pirandello's six characters in search of author this is the last important point fifth point intertextuality as a form of collage style writing many postmodern authors wrote their work overtly in dialogue with other texts the techniques they employed included pasties or imitating authors styles the combination of high and low culture writing that tackles subject that were previously considered inappropriate for literature guys if you're my online student you must have studied julia kristeva for intertextuality so the moment you hear the word intertextuality you'll understand that intertextuality is the text which has references from multiple texts and to understand one text multiple texts are to be read and related yes in intertextuality postmodern readings are not easy because there are lines paragraphs phrases or the complete narrations are taken from various books one of the finest example of intertextual study is wasteland see this is the reason wasteland is a classic of moderns and postmoderns because if you read wasteland you'll find out that there are 35 plus big references taken from various books various myths various cultures and assembled as it is do you know this thing that intertextuality is when you write a book and you take lines paragraph references from various other books and arrange them in an order as you have read this the idea of intertextuality it is somewhere based on the style called pasties these are the most important five characteristics of postmodern age there are a lot more to get more of these things i suggest you to contact us on given numbers and now we go for the list of most important writers for you so that you can prepare and qualify jrf the first and the most important we have is samuel beckett we all know that beckett was the king of theaters of the absurd and wrote waiting for godot 1953 which got translated in english in 1956 read samuel beckett because he is the one there is no jrf possible without reading him next writer we have is john barth his famous work giles goat boy is the miracle one of the finest example of metafiction and is a must read third writer in the list is italo calvino his famous work If on a winter's night a traveler is an excellent example of meta narrative fourth is don't delilo don delilo's underworld is a work that deals with fragmentation narratives and along with that it also questions the global capitalism it's a very important work book number 5 john fowles french lieutenant's women also known as french lieutenant's whore is one of the finest example of meta fiction and is a must read book number 6 Joseph Heller Heller's Cash 22 which actually became a phrase for military craft and other things is an important work deals with paradox and pasties book number 7 Gabriel Garcia Marquez 100 years of solitude is one of the finest work that you have to read but make sure you read some other books also book number 8 Thomas Pynchon Thomas Pynchon's Gravity's Rainbow and Crying Lot of 49 are the classics of postmodern literature dealing with world play and seriousness book number 9 kurt vonnegut is one of the most important writer related to dystopian works 
of postmodern style called Slaughterhouse Five. Book number ten, David Foster Wallace. His famous work Infinite Jest, where the title has been taken from Hamlet, is a classic. Read it for the character study and the postmodern condition. So, guys, this is Vinit Pandey's presentation for postmodern age. My friends, it's a real big thing and it's still being explored. There are a lot of other things like queer studies, post-structuralist narratives, and along with that, there is the concept of media studies connected to postmodern literature. If you want to learn, if you want to qualify NATO JRF, or if you want to become a double JRF like me, then follow the method we are providing you in the classes here. Be the part of online class and learn like a pro. I suggest you this thing. Be the part of online classes and you will see that the paper is not tough for you. It is known for you and you know how to get a JRF in your first attempt. I invite you to join the online classes. Thank you. Mm -hmm.